Salamat Ziang. In the previous video, we discussed the longhand addition in binary and designed the half adder circuit for adding two bits together. Here, we'll continue that discussion with the full adder, which allows addition of three bits. This will prove very useful since any column of longhand addition simply involves three bits. The design process is a straightforward one. We first build a truth table with three inputs. Those inputs are strategically named A, B, and C in to help us with larger adders later on. A and B can be thought of as the two given bits to add, and C in is the carry in from a previous column of addition. Three inputs gives eight rows of the truth table, and we obtain the two bit output by adding together the three bits on the input row. So zero plus zero plus zero equals zero zero. 1 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1, 0, and so on for all the rows. We name the output bits C out and S. If doing longhand addition, the C out bit is carried out to the next column, while the S bit is part of the final sum. I don't show the K map here, but through it we can obtain the simplified SOP equation for C out. It is useful to reflect on the reasoning that the equation communicates. This says that if there are at least two inputs that are true, then the C out bit is true. In other words, if the inputs add up to at least two, then there is a carry out. Makes sense, that's what we expect with binary addition. The S equation does not simplify so nicely in SOP form. It forms this rather lengthy equation, but there is a pattern here that we can take advantage of. Notice that these min terms represent the cases where only CN is true, or only B is true, or only A is true, or in the last min term, where all three inputs are true. In other words, whenever there is an odd number of true inputs, then the output is true. Earlier, we defined exclusive OR as the odd function. We can apply exclusive OR across all three variables to make this a more condensed equation. And finally, we can convert those equations into the circuit you see here. Notice how convenient the three input exclusive OR gate made wiring the S output. However, this is not the only way to build a full adder. There are many ways to skin a cat. In fact, this approach is often avoided because three input exclusive ORs are clunky to build and are not common chips. So, an alternative method is shown here. The C out equation can be written in this form. We could prove this algebraically, but let's prove it conceptually. This statement says that a two bit sum will have a carry out if both A and B are one, or if C in is one as well as one of the others. Seems reasonable to get a sum of at least decimal two then we need at least two ones being added. We can consider the same S equation not as a single three input exclusive OR, but rather two sequential two input exclusive ORs. What is the advantage of reinterpreting both output equations? Because we see a common A exclusive OR B. We can take advantage of that as seen in this schematic. Here, the A exclusive OR B gate leads into two following gates. The first is another exclusive OR to give the S output. The second is an AND gate, which is part of the C out circuit. Which gate level circuit is best? It depends. Both use five gates, so the hardware costs may be similar. A drawback of this setup is that there are three levels of gates, which leads to larger propagation delays. On the other hand, there are no rare three input exclusive ORs. Another advantage is that this schematic features a pattern we saw with the half adder, an exclusive OR and an AND gate working in parallel. And this happens twice. So with a half adder device, we could quickly build a full adder. Let's hop over to the simulator to see all three options. Here's the first simplified full adder circuit. With any of these, it's important to test. 
I can adjust the inputs to show that 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 0, 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1, and that single input 1 can be any of the input switches. 1 plus 1 plus 0 equals 1, 0. Again, the order doesn't matter as long as two inputs are 1. Finally, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, 1. Great. It all seems to check out with what binary addition should give us. Here is the second full adder circuit, taking advantage of A, exclusive or B. I'll let you trust me that this one passes all the tests as well. And now for the new wrinkle, building a full adder from two half adders plus an OR gate. We can peek inside this device symbol by double clicking. There, we see the AND and exclusive OR gates. Then, by an act of substitution, we replace each of those paired gates with this device and pay attention to which output lines go where. This circuit would not work if we swapped wires exiting the S and C out ports. I can run through the same test here and demonstrate that the addition of three bits is done correctly. Use this as a reminder of three big ideas. One, there are many design routes to accomplish the same goal. Two, device symbols can be used to abstract and simplify the appearance of a circuit, but the base gates are still at the bottom of it all. And three, pay very close attention to the names of the ports. Otherwise, the device symbols might not work the way you expected.